They said, you go with me. You go with us tonight. And by the end of the meeting, you'll be shaking on the power of God. You'll walk around in love with everybody thinking, my goodness, where'd all this love come from? I'll tell you, you'll step, when you step over to the realms of cooperating with the Spirit, you're overwhelmed with love. You're overwhelmed with boldness and confidence. Hey, you know what? It's not self-confidence. It's divine confidence. I'm not going to ask you, how's your self-confidence? I'm going to ask you, how's your divine confidence? Because it's a whole other realm. It's literally stepping into the life of Jesus. If there's anything God's people have got to hear is that Father has made a way for us to step into His life. It is called the life of Jesus, and it doesn't look like what most people are showing. And you can take that as condemnation if you want, or you can say, listen, pastor, teach me how. And I'll say, good, finally you caught on. Now just start jumping with me. Start dancing with me. Start worshiping with me. Start praying in the Spirit with me. Hallelujah. Start reaching into the realm. You know, listen, I, I must say this. I must tell you this. There are times in my living room, in the private place, shut away, in the car, driving down the road or whatever, I have to deal with something coming up against me, trying to enter, trying to stop the flow. And I would hate to have to do that in church because sometimes it isn't pretty. Sometimes it's just getting after it, you know. It's a roar, as it were. And if you don't have any other time to get connected with the Holy Ghost other than church, that's, we will work with that. I'm not, I almost said it's fine. It's not. But we will work with that. And if you have to have a spiritual fit, to break through whatever you've been allowing to oppress you in the meeting, we'll deal with it. The bigger issue is that you break through. The bigger issue is that I could hear somebody begin to flow in the Holy Ghost without having to force it. Where there's a sweet It's just hard to stop. <laughs> it's not hard to start. It's not hard to start. And tonight, if you're standing in here and you hunger for the things that God has given to us to be able to step over and begin to connect with miracles, with signs and wonders, with divine power and authority, you're hungry for that, then Father will supply that hunger with divine empowerment and you'll have the flow. And don't you tell me, don't, I don't want to hear anybody say, oh, well, I don't flow in the anointing like that. Oh, so there's two anointings and you got the other one. Oh, so there's two Holy Ghost and you got the other one. Oh, oh, I wouldn't want to be in the other one. I mean, there's like two Jesus and you're preaching another one? I mean, there's two Pentecost and you got your own kind? Now I'm going to go with the company of saints. Hallelujah. I've heard all of the lying demonic excuses that some demon whispered into the ear of a saint and they thought it was God speaking and they agreed wholeheartedly and then listened from that day forward to thousands of words of God proclaimed and it was simply subverted by a whisper from a devil. No, I'm serious. I, 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 I want to help you tonight. I know the strategies of the enemy of, of your soul. Satan, he uses the same old trick. It was a song. It's a one-trick pony. One trick's all that pony knows to do kind of thing. And that's it. That's Satan. The Word of God is living and it's powerful. It is a light unto your path. It's un. It's immutable. It's unchangeable. God has exalted it above His name. If God's declared it in His Word and has established it in His Word and He's said it time and time again, it should produce within your life hunger. You know, we are here to cause you to believe. Because unless we can cause you to believe, you will not believe. We are here to be the witnesses of the Lord Jesus Christ to convince you of these things concerning the Spirit of the Lord, the promises of God, and that equals faith. That equals believing. 
And I, I'm, you know what? I believe that it's time well spent, even though it may take years. Because if ultimately you will develop into a place of being a hearer and a doer, then we would have been a participant with the Holy Ghost to raise up signs and wonders and miracle workers in a time where everything seems to be conformed to the world, fashioned after that which man can relate to in his natural understanding, which is entirely disconnected from the Father, disconnected from the Lord Jesus Christ, disconnected from the Holy Spirit. The things of God cannot fit into the natural framework of, of the thinking of men. And we are culturalized. We are indoctrinated within the caste system of our social structure to believe things and to cooperate with things that are anti-Christ, anti-God, that are anti-Holy Spirit. And Father's trying his best to bring us over into a realm where we begin to be clothed, endued with the very mind of Christ, the very mind of the Spirit. It's that which we yield to that's not, as it were, outside of us. It's a wellspring that springs up within us, but it also is a working of God alongside of us that comes and fills us. And the Spirit of the Lord has commanded us to do something, to be continually filled with the Spirit. And I want you to understand this. To be continually filled with the Spirit it's the same as being baptized in the Holy Spirit. And the Lord has asked us to do it on a continual basis. Why? We have to be willing to come to some place of obedience. You can fast and pray all you want, but until you obey God, it isn't going to work. I'm going to tell you right now, if there's anything that fasting and prayer is, did for me, was it brought me to a place where I found a realm of my life committed to prayer. Committed to in continually interacting with God not on a surface basis because I still see people they they want to try to relate to what I'm saying based upon a a place that isn't in the same location so to speak it is where God the Holy Spirit is allowed to come and work in you and rapture you into a realm of love and peace and joy that is absolutely supernatural and ecstatic and it's the best miracle going outside of salvation and it produces a heavenly connection to where faith is such at work that you'll speak to the mountains, they'll get out of the way because faith is the supernatural divine power entrusted to us to do God's works. Three amens, four nods of the heads, and 15 people shocked, looked, got a shocked look out of their, you know, they're looking like they're shocked out of their mind, and the rest of you didn't know what I said. Faith is a supernatural divine ability of God given to us and trusted to us so that we can do God's works. And God the Holy Spirit is the teacher and the leader and the guider and he gives to us a power at work on the inside of us, a supernatural ability which is a wellspring, which is a treasure within us, which is a river flowing out of us and the first and initial Expression that which takes precedence over all things is they begin to speak with other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. And I'm telling you, it was a rush. Somebody was telling me, trying to tell me about the drug they did and how it was a rush. I tell you, I got a rush you've never even thought of. Ha ha ha. I'll tell you what a rush is, the going down Victoria Falls at the end of the Zambezi kind of thing. That's a rush. Can you imagine? Most likely you won't survive it. Huh? Huh? It's bigger rush than that. This is, I'm talking about a bigger rush. Huh? Hallelujah. Bigger rush. This is more real and more exciting than jumping out of an airplane at 20,000 feet and not pulling the chute until you're about 2,000 feet from the ground. This is a bigger rush than that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To land in somewhere up in the North Sea. Ha! I'm telling you, listen to me. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No, 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 no. It is. Don't look at me like, don't look at me all pious. 
I'm wanting to somehow convince you to place your expectation in a category that goes beyond religious and natural and get you over into something that causes you to absolutely be captivated, caught away, shocked out of your mind, cover your face, cry, holy, holy, holy. To go, ah! Ha-ha! You cannot have a natural experience with a supernatural God. You cannot have an earthly qualification for what that looks like when you stand before the fire of his presence and behold his glory and hear the sound of his voice. I tell you, God's calling you up into a realm of divine interaction. you got to be willing to believe it. You have to believe it. You have to believe it. You have to recognize the imprisonment of religion, the status quo of that which everybody else is doing and calling it the worship of the Spirit or the worship of the Lord. you got to quit justifying a state, casual, normal, and even worse than that in many cases, slothful, lukewarm, other things that are a disdain to God. I, I'm going to stir myself up. I tell you right, we're gonna, hey, I'm going to tell you right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you come to a place where you don't have to stir up the gift of God. It is so stirred, huh? It Torah Mashi Potana Melekapa. Hallelujah. It is so stirred it's hard for you to sleep. Hallelujah. Horabaste. I want you to know tonight that God has made you a royal priesthood. That is an amazing thing to think about. He's made you a holy nation, a part of a holy nation. A highly treasured people to himself. And I want you to understand within the framework of that, there are responsibilities. And the most important responsibility of the priest is to stand there before the Lord with a, and minister to him in, in this wonderful context of his manifest glory, his manifest presence, and the fire that came right out of the realms in which he exists. Hallelujah. And he says, he says to us, minister, grab another log, throw another log on the fire and praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray till I feel liquid love. I'm just going to put it that way. Because I want to go beyond just some kind of little sensation. You feel like, well, I like people a little bit better than I did before. No, a love that captivates you, that compels you, that you can walk up to somebody you've never seen before, put them in a headlock, tell them that you love them, and tell them that Jesus has now come and got their number, and they're going to give their self to, over to him right now. They're going to fall upon their knees and repent. you got this boldness and this faith and this authority to turn men from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to the power of God. What an anointing that has been waiting for us to seize, to seize it, to lay hold on this life of God. To lay hold on eternal life is to lay hold on Jesus because, as we know, John personified eternal life as Jesus. And we have seen that eternal life. It was manif he was manifested unto us. And we proclaim him, reveal him unto you. Speaking of Jesus, seize this divine opportunity. Don't let it be like a rainbow out there. Oh, look at that. Isn't that so beautiful? That's the covenant of God. That's all he did that because of this and because of that. No, seize that opportunity. Of this bullshale, who said that? Who said that? Come on, girl. Come on now. La se poranaya. See, that came out of another realm. Uh, that didn't come out of no religious realm. That was the voice of the Spirit. You just go with Him. So many people are intimidated. They're scared to flow with God. I'm going to tell you right now, you're going, to have to get it. you're going to have to get over into a realm that you have a personal handwritten invitation signed in the blood of Jesus Christ, sealed by the Holy Ghost, to come over into this exciting place of God's divine abundant life that is a river more than a wellspring. It is a continuous opportunity to be filled up to be filled, to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. 
I'm going to tell you right now, I am not in the need of return. I do not need to return to the Lord. I do not need revival. I do not need an awakening. I, I'm not waiting for the baptism of the Holy Ghost fire. I'm living in it, in Him. Hallelujah. I'm talking out there to a people, and I'm going to be used by the Spirit of the Lord to shake this thing up. I'm, a, I'm not going to leave the world like I found it. I'm not going to leave my culture, my society, the people that I know like I found them. They will love me or they will hate me. But one thing for sure, they're going to encounter somebody who really, absolutely is persuaded that God is who he says he is and that they're living in what he supplied. One day I was praying for a woman. She got healed right in front of her son. And her son said, oh, mom, that's just the power of suggestion. I said, well, when is the last time you suggested to someone to be healed? And they didn't get healed. And by the way, why have you left your mom in pain so long? Why didn't you suggest to her earlier? He, at the end of conversation. <laughs> oh, come on, people. There is a realm that God would cause you and I to live in of such wisdom and such the knowledge of God that there would be no one who stands before us that we would not tell them the very key that would unlock their door and th of their heart and they would have an encounter with God and what they did with it afterwards is none of your business or my, my business is their business but nonetheless our business would have been fulfilled for we would have introduced them. We would have brought to them that which God has empowered us to bring. A revelation of himself. One of the great sermons, one of the great sermons that first, one of the first great sermons that I heard Evangelist Tim Hall teach on was unlocking the key to unlock the hearts of men through the word of knowledge. It's, you know, I'm just kidding. That's my title of it. But that he, he knows what I'm talking about. Maybe some of you heard it. Powerful. The example, Jesus speaking to Nathaniel, unlocking the door of his heart, the door of his affections, the door of his emotion, the door of understanding, unlocking to him revelation. Just by being able to say, here's where you're at, under the fig tree, the word of knowledge speaking. Come on, people. The Lord has defined the church as a group of people who so flow in the realms of divine ecstasy. I'm an ecstatic. Of divine ecstasy, of divine love and joy and peace that the Spirit of the Lord in every manifestation of the working of the Holy Ghost is revealed. We all prophesy one by one. We sing in the Spirit. We sing with the understanding also. We pray in the Spirit. We pray with the understanding also. We all prophesy one by one. There's tongues. There's interpretation of tongues. And then the lost come in our midst and they see this moving and of the glory of the living God in our amongst us and what's going on through the activity of the Spirit through our lives. The word of knowledge comes to them. The thoughts and the intent of their heart being revealed. They fall down in the place and they sure say, surely God is here. What an altar call when God himself makes it. What an altar call when the sinner actually makes the altar call and says, surely God is in this place. I'm pressing in for something. People say, why are you restless? Why are you insistent? Why are you passionate? Why don't you give it a rest? Why isn't it ever good enough? Because we're looking for a realm that is what I see as the very base, the very foundation, the very baseline, if you would, of what we're supposed to be expressed to us in the pages of the New Testament, beginning in Acts chapter 2, beginning in the life, the person of Jesus Christ, what he did is what we're supposed to be doing. His very personified life, action, and deed is what the church is supposed to be looking like and functioning. And it isn't going to happen because you sit around saying, oh God, I would like to do this if you can get around to helping me. It's you and I taking a hold of that which God has supplied, agreeing with him, trusting him, and not having it any other way. When I discovered, I got a, I had a divine discovery one day. I discovered that you can always have a move of God. And when I discovered that, hallelujah, I, everything changed in my life. I always have a moving of the Holy Ghost wherever I go. If I've got one minute, I can have a move of God in one minute. If all I got is one minute, I'll have a move of the God, the Holy Ghost in one minute. My goodness, if I got two hours, prepare yourself. Hallelujah. Ha <laughs> ha. We're going to bring the fire. Hallelujah. Because we're going to bring the word. And his word is like a fire that burns up a chaff. We're going to bring the hammer. Hallelujah.